Pisces is one of the most mysterious constellations. What is the identity of the two fish? And most strangely of all, why are they tied to the neck of Cetus, the sea monster? I think the most obvious interpretation is that the fish are Israel and the church, that their experiences in this world are bound together and their eternal destinies are bound together. The two fish are the constellation of Pisces. The cords that are tied to them are a separate constellation called the band, which we'll deal with separately. So this constellation, Pisces, together with two of its decans, focuses on the conflict that Israel and the church are experiencing in this age. The final decan shows us the King Messiah enthroned. Victory is guaranteed. Let's look at the sign. Here is Pisces, the two fish, one, two, with the band. And that's Pegasus off to the right there. You can see his foot, he's upside down, I'm afraid, but there's his legs, there's his wing, and his head is there. Now, one of the fish is pointing upwards towards the North Polar Star. The other is at right angles to the first. He's swimming along the line of the ecliptic, the, the apparent path of the sun. Now the ancient Egyptian name is Pisces Hori, the fishes of him that cometh. What an amazing name. Both these fish are identified as belonging to the Messiah. Israel is God's firstborn son and the original vine. The church has been redeemed out of the world by the blood of the Messiah and is grafted into the original vine of Israel. We are bound together. These are both the fishes of him that cometh, the Messiah. The Hebrew name is dagim, meaning fish, plural. The word dagar means to multiply or increase abundantly. Hence, the swarms of fish are called dagim. The Syriac name is nuno. The fish lengthened out, as in posterity, generations to come. There will not only be a number uncountable, but they shall endure eternally. Of these two fish, one is focused on and directed toward heaven. Its emphasis is on the heavenly calling. It has a heavenly vision that quite absorbs its energy. Maybe this is the church. Christians are always seeking to aspire to higher things. Their literature speaks much of heaven, our eternal destiny. We stress the unseen, the spiritual. We are directed upwards. The other is swimming horizontally, concerned with this world, with bringing heaven to earth, attending to every aspect of life, eating, clothing, hygiene, relationships. Nothing escapes its attention. This could be Israel, the Jews. Jews are always seeking to earth, to ground what they have seen in the spirit, to actualize their faith, to make heaven on earth. On their most holy day, they fast all day and wear white garments, all in imitation of the angels. Now, this is not for one second to imply that the church is careless of worldly matters, heaven forbid, or that the Jews don't have a heavenly vision. We are talking about an emphasis. I accept that these are oversimplifications, but so are the two fishes in a sense. They picture a broad reality, a black and white representation. The names of the two stars give further understanding. One is called in Hebrew, Okdar, the united. These two fish, those swimming in different directions, are united. That is very interesting. If the church fails, heaven forbid, Israel will fail. If Israel, the Jews, fail, heaven forbid, the church will fail. But none of this will happen. The second star is called in Arabic, Al-Samaka, the upheld. It is God himself who upholds both Israel and the church and will preserve them both through all their trials. And now we come to the first decan, the band. What restrictions do both these fish have in common? The answer lies in seeing what the bands are tied to. Both bands of the fish are tied 
to the neck of a monster, a sea monster called Cetus, the natural enemy of the fish. We shall look more closely at Cetus in the Aries series of constellations. All we need to know here is both the church and the Jews will experience great opposition in this world before the kingdom of the Messiah can be established. It's par for course, as they say. The natural limitations, these, these, have, these are limited, these two fish, they're bound. The natural limitations of this present evil age that is increasingly directed by Satan is a reality that can't be denied. The demands of globalism and godlessness are now beginning to spread tentacles into our personal lives. Nothing is out of bounds, and this affects both Jews and Christians. There is another limitation, that of our own flesh, the enemy within, if you like. The weakness of our own flesh still restrict, restricts us, often denies us the prize. One day we overcome our irritability, but the next day it flares up again. The best things we do are blighted with selfishness. The battle will be with us as long as we are in this world and in this body. But take heart. The bands are tied to the neck of the beast like a lead. Doesn't this suggest that the beast is really under our power and authority? But that's another story. 